What's up you guys? This is Tyler from the Harringtons. We're back with a brand new video today. Uh, we're gonna do another film breakdown. I haven't done one of these in a while, but I really do enjoy making these types of videos. Um, I just think that it's a really great way for you guys to see kind of behind the scenes into my process, um, how I put my films together, the way I work in Premiere, all that kind of stuff. And it's also really great for me, and then it kind of helps me really think critically about like why did I put this shot here, and why did I choose this song in this transition or whatever. So uh, we're gonna jump into it, it should be pretty awesome. Uh, this is one of our favorite films of the whole year, Adam and Meredith. It was actually one of our last few uh, video weddings of the year. Um, but yeah, we're gonna jump into it and we're just gonna break it down. All right, so here we are, we're in uh, Premiere Pro CC 2017. And like I said, we're talking about Adam and Meredith's uh, feature film here. So I'm gonna link uh, in the description the uh, the link to watch the full film. Get, make sure you go do that first before you kind of watch this breakdown. Uh, I think that'll just make more sense. But um, before we jump into the film itself, let's just talk a little bit about the way things are set up here. Um, like I said, uh, Premiere Pro CC 2017. Um, and you can see here, this is our project. This is how I organize everything based off of these folders. Audio is obviously, these are all the different soundtracks that I drug in as potential soundtracks to use. I did not use all of these, but I like to have like a handful just to kind of fit within the within the vibe, whatever I'm feeling. Uh, under footage, I have it broken down by all the different cameras. These are all of the cameras that we used on this shoot. Um, which seems kind of like a lot, but some of them were used for really specific purposes. Um, effects and stills, didn't have too many for this one. Um, our end card, cinemascope, uh, crop lines, and then an adjustment layer. Um, on a normal project, I would put stuff in here, like if there's any photos or any lower thirds or anything like that, but uh, not for this one. And then uh, under sequences, we have all of our different sequences. Um, I do a call sequence for all of the main cameras. Uh, so I can show you that here. So under Sony call, you can see I just go through and I uh, pull out the best parts from all the different footage. So I'll watch through uh, the entire, um, all the different clips, watch through each, every single one, and I just pull out the best bits and pieces and I put them into this timeline and then I separate them out based on the, you know, what's going on. So, you know, here's the note writing, all the note writing shots go right here. You know, the bride, uh, groomsmen, bridesmaids, etc. And I label them all like this uh, using markers. And I just do this so it's easier for me to look back. And I do this for all of the cameras. So uh, with the C100, which is like, you know, the main camera, you can see, um, you know, just broken down to all the different sections of the day. So that when I pull everything together, I'm pulling just from the best clips instead of having to try and sort through all of the clips and pull that out. Um, that's just sort of the process that I've found over the years. Um, so yeah, I have a different call sequence for all of those. Obviously my different feature film sequences, if I don't wanna start over completely, I'll make a new one if I wanna make some major changes. And then sync sequences is where I put all the different things that I have synced. Um, I have a specific video on how I do multicam sequences, but you can see those um, right here. You know, these are all just multicam sequences. And what I'll do is I'll go through all the speeches like this and I'll, um, like this is a section of the speech that I thought was good and that I might wanna use in the film. So I just, uh, you know, cut that part out and then I just pull it up onto the second track here. So that when I go back through, I know where all like the good uh, pieces are of the speech that I might want to use. So, all right, cool. So that's a little bit of the, you know, the background, the way everything is organized here. But let's jump into the film itself. So um, we're looking at a feature film. So for us, a feature film is 10, around 10 minutes between, uh, 10 to 12 minutes is what we are aiming for. And uh, so yeah, so this is it right here. You can see the entire thing. It is about right on the dot at 10 uh, minutes, 10.30 it looks like here. So um, the way I organize this is I always save uh, the first track here, like the video one track is always where I put any sort of speaking. So if any of the uh, ceremony, any of the notes, like anywhere where there's audio that I wanna hear and maybe be able to reference at a different point in time and kind of cut back to that, that all goes on video one and then the audio for that all goes on audio track one. Um, I have audio track two and audio track three muted at all times. Um, and then I build my B-roll and everything else on top of here on tracks two and three. So again, track one is just for audio, anything with attached audio, 
uh, two and three is for everything else I don't need the audio for. And then uh, audio tracks four and audio tracks five is where I put the different um, soundtracks so I can blend them together easier. And then six uh, is just sort of like a catch all. So cool. All right, so let's jump right into it. Let's look at the first few seconds of this film here. So we start off with some nice um, slow-mo shots of the bride and groom, kind of set the mood. Um, I kind of like to start, this was a really emotional day and the, uh, Meredith is a graphic designer, so she's super artistic and they were just very, um, I don't know, kind of like whimsical is a good way to describe them. So I kind of wanted to set that mood right from the beginning. So um, these, all these gimbal shots that you see throughout the whole day are the Sony a6300 uh, with a 16 mil lens on it on the Zhiyun Crane. Um, and this was the first wedding I actually ever used that combo and ever used that camera. So I'm really happy with the results I got, um, even though it wasn't so sure. So again, so we have gimbal shot here. Again, very like just kind of romantic with the golden hour. Uh, this is a C100 with a 100 millimeter macro or uh, so this was a 100 millimeter macro. This was a 50. Um, the three lenses I carry are the 18 to 35, the 50, and the 100 millimeter macro with the C100. So all the shots you see today pretty much will be from those. Um, cool. uh, so we go into this nice little drone shot of these cows just to kind of set the scene. We want people to know. Um, and then I love kind of using from the pastor. Uh, in this particular case, the pastor was actually the groom's dad. So that actually fit um, and made it even that much more special. But I kind of like the like, dearly beloved, we're gathered here today to kind of just set it all off as a, you know, as a good intro we're into the film. Hundred millimeter macro on the C100, back to the gimbal. And guests, showing friends, together, family. Adam and Meredith in holy matrimony. Some more slow mo beauty shot of the bride on the 100 with the 50. Oh, it looks so good! I love the book. Look at that. So, the photographer for this um, was a friend of ours, and she's awesome, awesome, awesome. So, we had some amazing portrait time throughout the whole day, and the light was just perfect all day long. So, again, this is the C100 um, with the um, 100 millimeter macro, or no, this is the 50 actually. Um, I just love the way this looks. I, the 85 is one of my favorite focal lengths to shoot at. So. It is an honorable estate, instituted of God, and it signifies unto all of us. So the reason why I go back to this shot, I wish I could see the, his face better here. Like I kind of wish he was right here. But um, if you look at the rest of my multicam, the other cameras weren't up yet um, for whatever reason. So this is the only shot that I have, but I kind of need it to break up and for it to make sense, kind of like jumping back and forth so that you understand as a viewer, like where we are in the day. Um, so obviously you can tell that we're at the ceremony and all that kind of stuff. So this is her dad and this is the groom and, um, you know, I, I wish that I could see the officiant right, right here in this window, but, um, I thought it was still important to kind of cut back to that. And then this audio is all being recorded from the groom's mic, which is pretty awesome. So you can see the groom standing here, um, groom standing right here. And then the, the officiant is here speaking and you can hear it. It sounds, I think it sounds really good considering it's not actually even on the officiant himself all of us, that mystical union which so we jump all the way even into the dancing with another uh gimbal shot here just again i love like the, the intimacy of this and just this backlit right here i think it looks really awesome um and basically in this first minute here we're kind of giving a summary of the whole day showing bits and pieces of the whole day um and then we're gonna kind of transition back in this next shot to to the beginning of the day so there you can see his face a little bit, but cool. So we use this drone shot as a transition, again, setting the scene a little bit more. Um, as I'm looking at this now, I don't love the coloring that I have on here. Um, I kind of like it better the way it was before, but that's neither here nor there. So, okay, so we were going from the audio from the officiant uh, at the beginning here and just kind of giving a nice general overview, um, you know, bringing their faith into it, some stuff like that. Uh, jumping into uh, the note from the groom. Adam, we are almost married, but as you always say... And I kind of like this pairing. Obviously, she's writing the note that he's now reading. Um, we got some really great shots of her. Uh, this house they got ready in was so cool. It was just this really cool old um, manor that you could rent out. So they rented out the whole thing, which was awesome. Um, 
But yeah, so I got these really nice shots. A lot of these um, obviously are the C100. I think this is with the 100 millimeter macro. Like I just love this bokeh and the light from the window where she was sitting was just perfect. Um, try to get a variety of shots here. That's with the gimbal, kind of like a dolly push in sort of shot, uh, which I think looks pretty cool. It's hard to believe the day is finally here. Today I give you my... And you know, I'm, all these different shots of the note, you know, we have one, two, three, three, four, four, five different shots um, of this. And this was all it happened in, you know, two minutes, three minutes, maybe just shooting for a lot of variety, um, you know, tight shot, medium shot, uh, you know, super close up of her hands, the wide push in to show the scene, all the kind of things just to tell that story in, you know, as few of shots as possible. It's hard to believe the day is finally here. Today I give you my hand to Showing who's talking is important because we didn't show them at the beginning. Uh, we need to make sure we know like who's reading this. Obviously, you can probably guess, but it's just good to make sure everyone knows that it's the groom who's reading this. Um, and then the the audio from the groom here uh, is all being recorded on the Rode NTG4 Plus, which I have on top of my C100, and it just plugs straight into the XLR handle. And um, I just get nice and close with the 18 to 35, usually kind of around 35, but kind of whatever fits the best for the for the shot. Um, but I try and just stay pretty close so that the mic is close to his mouth and um, gets really good sounding audio without having to deal with a lab or anything like that. So my life to share and my heart to keep. Again, some more slow mo showing her. You know, this is a nice transition up the stairs. I to say. Um, you know from you know sealing up the note walking up the stairs i think this is a really cool shot and this is one of the shots that like with the zion crane that you can get um, both of these shots are all three of them actually with the crane that would be really not hard to get but it'd just be way more complicated to get with a ronin or even with a glide cam or something like that but the ron or the crane is just so small and so easy to use that you can get these nice tracking shots and transition really easily between the two um, without having to worry about it too much. So um, right as, so we bring the dad, uh, his voice in, you know, about halfway through this clip. So that way when he, we do cut to him, it kind of makes sense. First of all, I wanted to say, good evening to everyone. Welcome to this wonderful day and our families. Really He's giving, you know, some nice family. background, explaining, you know, obviously, like, family's important to them. These are all different things about the couple that we're learning here in the first, you know, minute and a half. We already know a good a bit, good bit about the couple just from the little bits of audio that we've had playing throughout here. Um, and, yeah, and we had these nice detail shots here. These are, um, a lot of these are macro. Uh, it's either the 100 millimeter macro on the C100 in the slider or uh, the 18 to 35, kind of bouncing back between the two. But a lot of these are macro shots here. And um, like I said, Meredith is a designer and she had a really great eye for details and you know typography and things like that. So I really wanted to emphasize that in all these different detail shots here and showing the textures. Um, and again, the light was just so good. And now we're um, back to the bride reading her notes. So we've already gone through four different people speaking and we're not even a minute 45, we're a minute 45 into this film. So um, just trying to kind of get all the different vantage points that have really set the story from the beginning. So you kind of know all the different characters that are involved as we you know move forward throughout the story. But um, I love this. This is on the 18 to 35 on the 100. I just love this rack focus to the shoe. I think that's a really slick shot. I was really, I was really proud of that one. So, all right. So let's see. So we go to the bride reading her note. Uh, so same thing with this. Uh, we have her sitting in a chair right in front of the window to give that really nice, you know, wrapping light around her. Uh, same thing, really nice and close, the 18 to 35 and the uh, NTG4 Plus on the C100. Um, and it sounds really good in my opinion. And I don't have to worry about miking the bride. Because in my opinion, miking the bride is just sort of a hassle. Um, and it's just awkward, especially for guys. So I just don't mess with it. And I get really great sound out of the NTG4 Plus. So. After dinner, we walked down past the Torpedo Factory to have a seat on the pier at the Chart House. We both talked about the people we used to be. So I need to give some big shout outs here. All of these uh, makeup shots were shot by my lovely wife, Ashley. She's our, my second shooter and she killed it on these detail shots here. Um, these are all actually on the 5D Mark III with the 85, I want to say 1.2 probably is what she was 
shooting with for most of these but she did a great job getting a lot of variety you know we have like a medium shot tight shot we've got a detail shot of the you know makeup palette back to you know applying the makeup and that's kind of all we need you know we, we have a, a few more over here maybe of her getting ready but um you know just in those four shots we got a lot of variety it looked really good the light was amazing well exposed all that jazz so good job ash if you're watching this you the best um, and if you listen to what Meredith is saying, I know I'm kind of talking over her, but she's talking about like how they first met and how um, she kind of like knew he was the one and all this kind of stuff. And all these just different elements that you're gaining more information about this couple, le learning more and more about their story and kind of back bouncing back and forth to the day and the importance of the day and their relationship and how they met and all that kind of stuff. So used to be the new people that we have become. I think there was a part of me that always knew that I would end up on that pier with you. So this is one of my favorite um, go-to shots this year. I probably overuse it, but that's okay. Uh, I think it makes all the guys feel really awesome. So basically I just have them walk from the side of the frame into the window, like right in front of the window and shoot it, um, you know, nice and silhouette-y. So I'm exposing for the, uh, the outside for the tree here and he's obviously nice and dark walking, but you can still see, you know, there's light obviously around the outside of him. So you can totally see and make out enough detail in that. And then as he, you know, puts the jacket on, we cut to this side shot of him, which obviously we had him do uh, the jacket twice, once from behind, and then the second time I shot it from the side and just got a bunch of, of big details of him putting his right jacket away, on. That there was something different about you. You were such a gentleman, so, so patient. The final of the makeup shot, so we went from makeup, getting ready, to the groom getting ready, back to the bride finishing, getting ready, and now we're going to transition into... Um, into getting into the dress and stuff like that. But he's obviously, he's speaking again, bouncing back and forth, back and forth. Perfect housewife. Maybe I'll learn a thing or two from you over the years. Show some bridesmaids, some little from details. Forward, you're not just in my life, you are my life. I vow to love you for who you are and who you have yet to become. So uh, I love this shot. This is like kind of my go-to dress shot. Um, I try to vary it up, but sometimes it's just like, if it works, it works, and you just gotta get it. So. Um, this is the slider on the floor with the C100 and the 1835, just pulling back and tilting down simultaneously. And then I have the um, the leg, I think this is of just the bed that was in the room. It, it has like a foreground element to even, to sell that motion even more. But I just think it's a nice subtle way. And it kind of, again, with this room, especially with all the cool furniture and this mirror and all that kind of stuff, it was just... Good, and uh, we're blowing out this window a little bit, but I think that's okay. Obviously, like the dress is the main importance, and it's in the center of the frame, so it's um, where your eye kind of naturally goes. So, detail shots, all C100, bridesmaids. Adam. Uh, so now we go to our fifth speaker of the film so far. This is the best man and the brother of the groom. Um, and he is like in this shot here, obviously that's him and he's the one speaking um, and he was kind of a, a jokester. So I wanted to make sure that like when we brought him in, like you could tell that, you know, he cared about his brother and stuff like that, but he also has, you know, throws in a nice little joke at the end here. So let's listen, that girl right listen there for that. It's the most beautiful, fairy and awesome girl you have ever, we have ever met. It's a cool brother montage here with She's the gimbal shots. Intelligent and consistently better than you in fantasy football. Oh, zing. So I thought that was a fun little quote. You know, he's saying all these really great things about the bride. Um, you know, we got these nice shots that Ash got. Good job again, Ash, of um, you know, him helping him into his bow tie, you know, the brother shots. And then, uh, you know, those little zinger in there about fantasy football at the end. But I think that's great. And then uh, this reaction shot, um, when we for speeches, we always have one of us is covering the speaker. The other person is covering uh, the bride and groom to get these reaction shots. And I'll just kind of go through all those and I'll pull out all the good reactions. So any kind of laughter, any kind of like, any kind of response to the speakers, I'll pull them out. And I don't, I don't even know if this was exactly the response to this exact moment, um, but it's what I imagine he would have responded like. So I think it works and it fits, it fits well. Oh, don't freeze on me. Cool. So we've done been doing a lot of like getting ready, a lot of that kind of stuff. So now we're going to kind of transition back into a few um, 
you know, beauty shots, just to kind of break it up a little bit, showing the bride and groom together. And we're going back to the groom for some note reading. You are going to be a wonderful husband, and we're going to have a wonderful life together. Oh, I love that slow-mo. I'm so excited to be Mrs. Davis, and I bet you're excited to finally wear that ring for real. Oh, through the ring in there. You know, sometimes I try and avoid doing that, but when it's such a direct correlation, but I think it works here. So just looking at this, I mean, the light is just so perfect, you know, coming from behind. This is the beauty of working with a really good photographer that understands light, because then all you gotta do is point the camera and get it well exposed. But um, I love the way that this, uh, I just love that. So this is the C100. And I think the C100 is just a very underrated camera uh, right now for weddings. I think it just looks fantastic. I love you so much, sweetie. Tour old and gray, X's and O's, Meredith, almost Davis. Cool. So this is a cool gimbal shot. Again, being able to have that Zion crane, which is so small, and just kind of have it in the bridal suite and just kind of off to the side and be able to pick it up whenever and grab a shot like this is really nice, um, you know, compared to like a Ronin or a Glide cam that's just sort of in the way and you have to balance and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the crane, you just flip it on really quickly, grab this shot, um, and I think this is a really, a really cool shot. So we're going into a sequence here of her getting into her dress. Um, and this is, uh, you know, we had a combination of coverage here between Ash and I. And I think that the uh, the different cameras mix together uh, really well, bouncing back and forth between the 5D Mark III and the C100. So that's Ash on the 5D Mark III, 5D Mark III again. There's the C100. C100. And then we bring in her dad, part of her dad's speech, you know, back to him. We don't have to show him first because we've already introduced him once, but he's talking about how beautiful his daughter is. So we're having all these nice like beauty shots of her getting into her dress. They kind of go together uh, really well. Oh, I love that shot. Look at that. Look at that framing. Again, we're blowing out the windows, but I think that the light on her is just so good that I'm okay to lose that window because there's nothing really out there. Um, it might have been able to come down a teeny bit, but for the most part, I mean, I just think this is an awesome, an awesome frame. I just love this like corner and the mirror and the bottom third and all that, all that jazz. And if I actually go up here and I turn off the cinemascope, oh wait, that is how I shot it. So this was full frame, uh, how it was shot. And then with the cinemascope, I think it just even looks that much cooler, so. So let's talk about this just for like one second here. So uh, sometimes the when the father of the bride gives their speech right at the beginning, it's a little hard because you're just, everything was all set up for the first dance um, between you know the bride and the groom. And then usually this is like what comes right after it. So it's sometimes it's hard to get everything set up uh, that you might normally have set up if you're, you know, anticipating the speeches later in the night when, you know, like that's like the next thing up. So for this, we kind of had to scramble. And uh, so I'm just hand holding this with the, or not hand holding, I'm on the monopod with the C100 and the 100 millimeter macro. And I tried to do my best to like frame him in a way that was like pleasing. There's just a lot going on back here with like this speaker and this like random lady. Uh, maybe she's part of this table. I don't know if she's part of the band or not. Um, and like this light and all this stuff. But this is kind of the best, I feel like the best that I could do given the fact that it was just like a, he was, he was starting to talk and I had to just pick a side and kind of frame him up. So I wanted to at least make sure obviously that he's looking this way into the frame. So I'm giving him more negative space over here than over here to look into because the bride and the groom are on this side of the room over here. So, you know, I mean, it's fine. Um, it could be better probably, but I was doing my best. And then, so this is full frame, even like the keyboard is in there and stuff like that. So anyway, Okay. Back to some beauty shots. Mary, you look beautiful tonight. 50 /50. It is what now here we go. We finally got our other angles up and running for the ceremony here. So this is this is what I like to have had at the beginning. This to me is obviously like a better looking shot, but uh, we were just kind of we hadn't gotten up and rolling yet at the very 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 beginning. Um, but that's fine. So yeah, so he's talking about marriage here, kind of bringing it back to the ceremony. Oh, these shots are just so good. More slow mo. Mm -mm -mm. 
So this, like I said, slow-mo with the 6300. And I mean, if you like pixel peep on this like crazy, like if I zoom this into 100%, uh, or maybe like 200%, you can see, I mean, even at full resolution, this is bigger than 1080, but like it's, I don't know. I think that it looks good here, which is all that matters. Um, if you start pixel peeping and stuff like that on these cameras and these lenses and stuff, you can just drive yourself mad. I think this looks great. I think the slow motion is awesome. I really like the color. I think that it matches well with the C100. Um, oops, hold on, I'll bring this back. So anyway, so we're jumping from, again, some ceremony shots and we're going to the reception. We're kind of just bouncing all around. Um, we don't want to be too predictable. We're kind of, again, tell the story of the whole day. So we're showing the detail shots from the uh, reception because the bride paid a lot of attention to that and she it was really important to her. And I think they had some really awesome stuff in there. So these are all C100, uh, 18 to 35, probably. Look at that. Mm, look at that bokeh. Ooh, look at that bokeh. Love it. And then that's the um, the Sony. So I think between this and this, you know, I mean, the lighting obviously is a little bit different just from this this angle from the other side. Of the, so this was the table right here that I was sliding, and these are the bokeh that you see. So this is from a different angle, but I think that they match uh, pretty well. I don't think it's super obvious between the two. We're no longer seeing anyone. I knew I had just one focus before returning to Tennessee to show you how much I loved you. I recall numerous mornings. This is a cool shot. Um, again, the photographer was awesome and she gave us um, a good amount of time to kind of do whatever we wanted uh, with the bride in order to get the shots we needed. So uh, this one I actually slid down a little. You can see that I've uh, moved it down to make it super lower thirds with the um, with the cinemascope on. Waking up at um, this is just a cool combo. To down to Fort Lee for first formation and how easy it was to tell myself how much you were worth it. This is blown out a little bit. I was gonna, the first time ever using this camera, so I was still getting used to it. So I blew this out a tiny bit, um, but I thought it was still like a cool little detail shot, especially when she's like, you know, going from this, oh, come on, from this, where she's looking over her shoulder, you know, looking back down at her train, and then there it is again. So um, I just thought it fit well, but even though it is a little bit, a little bit blown out. I love that shot too. That's one of my favorite shots. Just like a slight little push in. Again, the Zion Crane allows you to do so much that it would be hard to do um, with any other stabilizer. And it's just so quick and so light and I could talk about it all day. I love it. Uh, got some shots of the bridesmaids. I love that shot. The crane, slow-mo. This is C100 on the 85 or the 100? Probably the 100. The first time I met Adam was at a so we've got the dad talking about Adam. You know, we're trying to get to know all of them a little bit more um, between using all the different audio pieces throughout the day to talk about all the different people who are in the film. So the bride, the groom, and then obviously important family. So we're using, now the dad is talking about the first time we met Adam. And we got, so we have shots of course, while he's talking about him, of Adam doing his bow tie, getting ready. We're going, we're kind of shifting back again, you know, front, front and back. We're always kind of like time shifting around a little bit. Good guy, good job, very polite. In fact, he is so polite. Every other word was, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. So finally I pulled him A little aside. laugh. I don't know if that was a real laugh from that moment, but it Adam, but it fits. You don't need to say, call me sir all the time. All right, so right here, you can see that our audio track is about to fade out. So as he's like about to deliver this like punchline to his joke, we're gonna like fade this audio track out. And then as soon as he like says it, Boom, we're going to bring the next audio track in right at that point to kind of like change the pace, change the tempo and moving into like a new, new section of the film. So here, let's listen. He hasn't done it since. Ho, zinger. And then boom, the music hits right on there. They're laughing. No, again, I don't see here. There's like, okay, continuity issues. I'm going to call myself out on this. Uh, the Like you can see here, that's light out during this shot and then the very next one it's dark out so technically that's not good but it's so quick it, most people wouldn't notice but i'm gonna be honest with you guys continuity issue right there I'm just gonna throw it out there anyway but we have a we have a pace shift in the song a little bit um these songs i've picked them because they kind of again they fit the aesthetic of the day they fit the aesthetic of the couple um but i still want to be able to have you know some more up pace some more 
um, just some shifting in movement in the way that the film feels. So, new song here. We've got people showing up. Three quick shots. Wide, tight, interesting perspective, medium, people getting off the bus, boom, and we're, and we're moving on. Um, you know, people sitting here, we always try and grab these kinds of shots as we're sort of just waiting for the ceremony to start. Um, I have Ash, she's off to the side with the C or the 5D Mark III and the uh, 70 to 200 on a tripod, just kind of like picking up shots of guests and stuff of people sitting down just for this very reason, for this sort of like transition shot here. Um, again, we're back, so we're showing the bridesmaids and, and the bride, they're going to get into the limo, they're on their way to the ceremony, the people are waiting sort of just like, I don't know, sort of building this anticipation. I cannot wait to dance the night away with you and I can't can't wait to probably cry when I Here see we come. So this is kind of cool again because this is like obviously probably his mom probably. and then this is his dad who's officiating. So that's kind of For a cool moment. Walking down the aisle with your father. Walking down the aisle with your father. There's a shot of your father. Again, a little, um, what's the right word? A little a bit of a literal translation of what's happening in the audio but i think it works uh one thing to note here is you can see uh this is my other camera and there's a monopod here uh so this is my c100 on the monopod over here this is a 6d with like an 85 on it so the way i do it is i am oops i'm over here on the gimbal and i follow them down the aisle and then as soon as they get down the aisle i grab this 6d right here and I stick it in the back of the aisle, and that's my like wide center shot. Um, the problem was that uh, we were sort of scrambling a little bit. Like the cam this camera didn't have a card, so I had to run. Like as they were about to come down, I had to run to the card, get the card, go put it back in. Like all this crazy stuff. So I set all this stuff up here, thinking I was gonna just glide cam from this side. But then I realized that the as the sun was moving, it moved out from behind here and was making this really harsh line so i wanted them to be backlit so i made like the last second decision as everyone started coming out to just uh, gimbal from this side so that they were all backlit which ended up being the right call because that looked that the other side they would have been this direct sun on them so this ended up looking better but this obviously is not ideal with this like tripod here and this monopod so you gotta gotta like pick and choose your battles. This is one where just like we weren't ready. We should have been ready before the ceremony started, and we just were making up for it. So, um, so this was Ash. So the way we had this set up is we wanted to make sure we got his reaction. And the way where her camera is, which is set up over here, uh, the seventy two hundred on the tripod, she just wasn't gonna be able to see his reaction. So she started on this side, and then she looped back around, which is why at the very beginning. We didn't have both cameras up and running, but this is a really good reaction shot of him seeing her come down the aisle. Of happiness that you have tonight for the rest of my life. Forever. Of that Whenever crane shot. And so this shot here you can see is a little blown out. Again, first time using it. And they came from the shadows into the sun and I just didn't have time to adjust it. But I thought it was a cool shot, so I thought it was worth using. Um, you know, I was still getting used to using the zebras and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. You know, the handoff, I think, is a really important part to show. Um, good shot by Ash here um, as he, you know, kisses her. And then we transition right into him so speaking. Adam, now our little girl is your wife. Yeah, so I thought that was a cool uh, bookend. So he, like, you know, he gives her away here, you know, gives her a kiss. And then he says, you know, Adam, our little girl is now your wife. Um, I, again, I thought that was just a cool um, juxtaposition. I don't really know. Like, they, they kind of went well together, it, you know, very symbolic. So, Adam, now our little girl is your wife. Our little girl. Back to some more beauty shots of the bride Marty. putting her shoes on as he's, you know, describing her. You know, I love that he's describing her as a little girl and things that she loved as she's like, you know, putting on her wedding dress and like getting, you know, to look as best as she possibly can. I just thought it was, again, the audio. It's all about the audio, guys. And we had great, great audio for this wedding. Shoe fly don't bother me. That's how she used to say it. And one of her favorites. Love this crane shot. 
Yeah. yeah. I thought that was like super, like she looks super happy and smiley, obviously here. I don't even know why, like why she was laughing or smiling in this moment. Um, but I just thought it fit really well with what he was saying about her. So yeah, I thought that was a really great quote from him. You are my sunshine and you always will be. That's just really sweet. And then we're transitioning back. This is you know obviously a wide shot to kind of bring us back, give us uh, one shot of context before we go right into the um, the vows back and forth. I, Adam, Mr. Walker Davis. Take you, Meredith. Take you, Meredith. Be my wedded wife. Be my wedded wife. All right, so the shot the cameras we have going on here so this back uh wide shot like i said before is the 6d canon 6d with the probably i think it was an 85 millimeter this shot here is uh, me now on the c100 with a 100 millimeter macro on a monopod um just holding it nice and steady and then this is ash on the 5d mark III with the 70 to 200 on a tripod so she did a really good job here of exposing for the skin tones um this is sometimes kind of tricky when there's direct sun like this from this side and obviously during the reception or the ceremony there's nothing you can do about it um it's just gonna be like that so she did a really good job of exposing this properly and allowing there to be shadow on this side of her face and stuff like that but i think that that looks like a, a good shot there um and we're just kind of bouncing back and forth between they said the same they both said the same thing for their vows and i think it's just a little long sometimes to show um him saying the full thing and her saying the full thing we didn't need all that especially since we're already you know six and a half minutes in so i just kind of bounced back and forth between him saying one line her saying one line him saying one line her saying oh. one line from this day forward for better for worse for richer for more in sickness and in health to love and to cherish till death do us part according to god's holy ordinance and there too i pledge you my faith and there too, I pledge you my faith. And then I ended with them both saying the final line, which I think kind of just like shows like, hey, they both said it, but we kind of just like shortened it a little bit. Adam, you may kiss your wife. And then we just go straight into um, into you may kiss you may kiss your wife, uh, because we've already done a bunch of good ceremony bits and things like that throughout the film up to this point. I, I felt like I didn't really need to add any more from the officiant saying anything or, you know, or whatever. So just straight from, you know, the vows into you may kiss your wife. Adam, you may kiss your wife. So you can actually see me. Uh, I'm like right here. I'm barely in that shot. I didn't really have anywhere else to go. I kind of got stuck here, but you can see I've just got the crane um, framing up this next shot here. So in slow-mo, I tried to do like a little bit of a slide and I kind of jumped a little bit, but I like the slow-mo there. Um, the audio obviously stays at regular pace down here. I'll just put my slow-mo shot above it to kind of fit uh, wherever it went. And then I was in position to get this shot backing down the aisle, staying out of the photographer's way of, um, obviously as I'm like coming down the aisle. And then I still have the same audio is, you know, running over of him saying, you know, you know, so he introduces them publicly, which is great. And then you can see what I'm doing here with some audio um, dipping. So like when everyone claps, you know, I have a nice little curved dip here. So it sounds natural, but we don't, the clapping is obviously always very loud. And then transition to the shot where he says, you know, I publicly announced blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then last thing over here for the audio for the uh, speeches or when they're doing their vows rather, uh, you can see that I actually have them all at different levels because when he's speaking, uh, he's closer to the mic, so he has a different level than she does, even just standing like two or three feet away. So I had to bump her up and um, leave him kind of, he was good, his levels were good, but she needed a little more uh, bump in her levels to make sure that they sounded the same when you bounce back and forth between the two. According to God's holy ordinance, yeah, so I think the levels ended up being pretty equal, which is good. So, okay. So, uh, we have them coming down the aisle, going in, and then transitioning right into the reception. My life is the best thing that has ever happened to me, and I cannot wait to give you my heart and hand to have and to hold 
in marriage today. I cannot wait to see you smile when the MC introduces us to the reception. As we I guess I was being really literal in this edit for whatever reason, but she's like, I can't wait to see you smile when the MC introduces us. And that's obviously what just happened. Um, but we're going right into some nice first dance shots. And they've already done some, um, you know, some nice slow-mo first dance shots with the gimbal. So what I, the way I do this is I like to follow them in, uh, as you can see from this shot. So I'm on the gimbal for all the different introductions and then I follow the bride and groom. I, I don't follow everyone to the dance floor. I only follow the bride and groom. So when they came in, I obviously followed them over to the dance floor. And then I just grab a few shots, like three or four different passes um, during the first few, like 30 seconds of their dance with the gimbal, which is where these shots all came from. Um, again, all this is slow-mo with the A6300, but so I grab these few quick gimbal shots and then I set the gimbal down and I pick up my C100. And all while I'm getting those gimbal shots and everything like that, Ash is on her 5D Mark III with the, um, with probably like an 85 uh, in this circumstance. And she's shooting while I'm getting gimbal shots. So we're getting a good variety. Um, yes, yeah, so we go for my gimbal shot, and then this is Ash's shot, which I think is actually on the 70 to 200. She happened to be on for this one, but that's a good shot. Again, uh, nice rim light, good exposure, looking good. And then we're back, you know, from a kissing shot. It makes sense to go to another kissing shot. It's sort of like a natural, natural transition. You've got the better end of the bargain here. And then we go back to his brother speaking, and this is kind of a cool, um, just quote that he gave during his speech which was really good and then it's also a way for us to bridge the um from where this song here is ending into the faster reception song so by far never forget that she's the best thing you'll ever have which is saying something because i know how wonderful you are if you spend any time around these two individuals you will understand that they have a beautiful love between them so this guy was a mover. He was not staying in a uh, position. So this is uh, me following him again. I think I was on the C100 and the monopod again, just because of how much uh, he was moving around, but I was able to keep him framed up. Today. And I'm so thankful to be here to celebrate and welcome a new baby sister to the family. Welcome Mary. Perfect. So that's like, you know, it, the, the next song comes in right at the like, you know, main point. So you can see there's even a gap here where there's no sound, but because of what he's saying is so compelling, it just sort of like, like transitions you right into the next song. Today, and I'm so thankful to be here to celebrate and welcome a new baby sister to the family. Welcome Meredith. Perfect. So welcome Meredith and then right into the next song. Um, and real quick while we're talking about this shot, let's just look at the color on this. Cause, um, it, I don't know what happened. I just shot it terribly white balanced. My white balance was just off, um, as you can clearly see. So, so it's obviously very uh, yellow. So let's see what all we had to do to it. Um, so this, I think I did all this with curves. Yeah. So you can see this is what it was. This is what we ended up at. And this is all coming from these curves. So pull it a lot of red out pushed a lot of blue and pulled out a teeny bit of green. And now the, this probably isn't like the most natural looking image. It might be a little blue, but um, I think obviously it's significantly better than this. Um, and then if I even take off the adjustment layer, you'll see we went from this to that. So, uh, so yeah, so basically what I, the way I do this is I kind of color correct everything the route you know I, once I get the whole edit laid down I'll go back and I'll color correct uh, everything for accuracy so this is what it would be like um, before the adjustment layer and then I put an adjustment layer down across the entire film and all I have on this adjustment layer is um, I adjust I bring up the faded film to around like 50 55 saturation up to 105 and then sharpness and then I'm adding uh, some contrast and I'm pulling down the blacks and also opening up the shadows a little bit. So just to kind of give it that filmy look and make it so, um, that's kind of a transition I've been going to more, trying to make it feel a little more cinematic. I just like the way that it looks um, with this faded film, but I don't want it to be too faded so it looks washed out. So that's why I pulled the blacks back in. So that's where you go, you go from this to this, which I think just looks cool and 
I like the way it looks. So cool. All right, so now we are transitioning back into the um all the reception stuff this is the cocktail hour obviously we got some nice shots of people mingling a few gimbal shots Ooh, that's loud slow-mo shots of the band the zion crane now so this song obviously is very like upbeat and very happy so we are trying to show some of the like obviously like happier moments throughout the day we had showed a lot of stuff that was very like uh, just pensive and I don't know if pensive is the right word, but just like re reflective. And it's been a very reflective edit, which I think reflects the couple, but they also had a lot of fun too throughout the day. So I kind of want, wanted to circle back and show a lot of the fun elements of the day, if that makes sense. So groomsmen smiling, big smile, bridesmaids, you know, they're all pampering her. A lot of slow-mo here, but I love that slow-mo. bridal party it was a really fun bridal party so it was a really great day um here's a, another drone shot it looks similar to the first one but i'm pretty sure that it's different um and then we're boom right right on that you can hear the beat drop right on the beat drop we jump right into some dancing It was a really, really fun reception. This was a really, this was just a great wedding all around. The band was cool. Um, got some, you know, shots of the band in there. People hanging out, having a good time. Just kind of bouncing around between all the different stuff, going back and forth between slow mo and um, regular speed, just to kind of give it some energy. You know, I think the slow mo is good for like emphasis and for certain things, but then some of the stuff you want to be full speed. So there's a little bit of slow mo. So we're ducking out the audio from this, bringing in the dad for like one more kind of like final punch, like final emotional moment. So yeah, so he gives like his kind of, it's sort of like a good wrap up because we're heading into the last 50 seconds here of the film, which is going to be mostly dancing. Um, so he kind of is just giving a good, um, you know, a good wrap up because that's the last piece of audio we're going to hear. So it's just like, you know, let's, you know, here we are, we're going to celebrate Adam and, Adam and Meredith Davis, you know, cheers. And then all the like fun, cheersy things. Again, psh, right on the beat thinking about that when you're doing your edit all this stuff is on the gimbal I don't normally shoot like this but um, I just love that gimbal a lot I love the way that it looks so back to the first dances just a few quick little shots of each one of them okay this was cool so um, this is the mother of the bride and obviously the father of the bride and she told Ash earlier in the day that he had this special song for her that was about wildflowers, and like that was their thing, and that he had these wildflowers prepared to give to her during her dance. So she told all this to Ash. Ash knew it was coming, so she set up this shot specifically so you could see mom bringing the flowers out to dad to give to her during their father-daughter dance, and it was really special. So that was cool, and then you know he gives her the flowers. Oh, how sweet. Of that wide shot that's cool good variety back to some fun dancing and I do like I probably tend to shoot my um, dancing shots a little dark I just kind of I don't want it to be too too bright I want it to um, be reflective of the way that the day the way that it actually looked in the room when we were shooting it so shoot everything on the darker side but i think it looks good it feels like you were there because that was very realistic you know showing a variety of people that can be in the film different types of shots kind of mixing it up a little bit but and then right into we're coming right up to the end here we're um we're looking at we're at the sparkler exit i love grabbing these quick little gimbal shots while everyone is um, just kind of standing around waiting. Um, a lot of these actually, I think, are after. Um, 
the bride and groom come down, they're just kind of, everyone's sort of just standing around with their sparklers, um, you know, as they're getting in the car to leave. So I'll grab a bunch of these shots um, right afterwards. And, you know, people, people love them. You know, they're spinning their sparklers, they're taking selfies with the sparklers. They're very, I just, I think those are, look cool. And then uh, we're following the bride and groom out. So this is what I do for almost all my uh, sparkler exits is I follow the bride and groom uh, from inside and I just follow them out. And the way that I'm doing this is I'm just crouched down as small as possible. And I'm positioning myself right behind the, the bride and groom. So when they stop in the middle to kiss and the photographer is taking their photos and all that kind of stuff, I'm completely hidden. So I just make sure that I can't see the camera uh, the photographer's camera because then the photographer can't see me uh, but I just crouch down and you can see here that I crouch oh, there's the crouch um, and I'm nice and low so I'm blocked by their bodies and then this one I actually was able to flip around to the other side which I thought was cool and get a nice shot backing out um, you know which is, which is a cool shot and then we end with um, the end card so yeah so that was the that was their film and I thought it was a really really great great film um just tons of great audio tons of great shots throughout the day again the photographer was a film photographer so she was super creative but she also gave us a lot of time to um, get the shots we needed and she was really um, aware of us and what we needed which is always the best when you work with photographers like that it just makes your day so much better and we just love love working with her but um really quick i just want to show two things here um because people ask me a lot about um, matching and shooting with both the um, A6300 and the C100 in the same timeline, in the same shoot. So let's just go to the very beginning here and we'll kind of look at the two. Um, okay, so this is the uh, A6300 and this is the C100. So. Um, and if you look really carefully, yeah, technically the C100 is probably sharper at uh, 1080p if you blow it up really big. But um, once it's exported and, ex and compressed and all that kind of stuff, it's kind of a negligible difference. Um, if I shot the 6300 at 4K, which I actually start might start doing more for, because I don't... I like slow-mo, but it's never really been my thing, so I'm still not sure if I'm like completely sold out on slow-mo. But um, sharpness aside, I think just from like a color standpoint, I think between here and here, although yeah, I mean this one is technically a little bit brighter. Um, let's look at this without any color, Lumetri color. So you can see here I did brighten it up in, um, as part of my like color correction. And let's even look without that. So between here and here, they're just exposed a little differently, but I think as far as like general, like your eye doesn't, oh, that's so different. You know, it's just, you can, t it's, I guess it's a different lens. Um, even between like this and this, like there's a difference. So this one I could probably bring down a smidge to make it a little bit darker and then that'll match a little bit better but from a color standpoint you know I don't think that they're too too far off um, you know as long as you're shooting the similar like the same white balance in like similar settings I think that they can totally pass off in the same in the same shot and they're not like I guess that and that look more along the same lines like lighting wise they're just a little bit closer um, but no, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it, it looks good. I'm really happy with it. And like I said, I think I'm going to start shooting 4k because the 4k on the 6300 is significantly sharper. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. Um, that's where that camera is at its sharpest. So I think that by shooting the 6300 at 4k on the gimbal, it'll, be more on the same level of sharpness with the C100. Um, but we're talking about like a $1,000 camera with the A6300. And when the C100 came out, it was a $6,500 camera. So of course, I mean, I think at 1080p, the C100 should be sharper, but the 4K downscaled to 1080p on the 6300 is super sharp. So I don't know, but from a color standpoint, um, 
I still think it looks good. And I think that until you start like really zooming in and pixel peeping and all that kind of stuff, you can't really tell a huge difference. But um, yeah, so as far as color grading goes, I mean, a shot like this, honestly, I mean, you can look, I didn't do anything to this. I mean, that's the thing I love about the Canon is that, I mean, this is straight out of camera, didn't, didn't touch it, uh, literally. Like you can look, there's no Lumetri color applied to it at all. Um, until I add the you know the adjustment layer, which just kind of uh, cools everything off just a teeny bit to give it a little more of that like kind of filmy look. Um, and again, all the stuff I showed you from before of what of what's on there, you can see I'm adding just a teeny bit of blue because I tend to shoot a little warm in camera, uh, just kind of naturally. But I mean, I think that this looks great. You know, if we zoom this in to 200%, you know, I mean. You can't ask for much better than that, I don't think. Um, which is why I just, I love, 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 love the C100. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, all these shots, I mean, a lot of these shots don't have anything done to it at all. Uh, but if you look at a shot like this, you know, that's straight out of camera. That's with color grading. Let's take the adjustment layer off so you can see. So this was a tough lighting situation, but you can see, I mean, you can push it pretty far. This is where I shot it again, a little warm. Um, shooting to, I'm trying, I'm shooting this probably to save highlights here as much as I could, but there's like literally just like this ray of light on them. So um, that made it hard, but you know, going from that to that. And then when you put this on top of it, you know, I think it looks cool um, and just looks nice and cinematic. So again, this was my first time ever using the 6300 for a wedding and I was really happy with the result. So anyway, there you guys go. That is my breakdown of the uh, wedding film for Adam and Meredith. Um, hopefully you guys learned something from this. Uh, I I always learn things about myself as I go through these. Even as I'm speaking out loud, I'm like, oh, I guess that, that is why I did that or whatever. So anyway, hope you guys find it helpful. If you did, if you did, please go ahead and subscribe below. If you have, have any questions, anything that you're curious about, anything that you found interesting, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll, um, I try and respond to every single YouTube comment. So, um, go ahead and leave a comment. I love getting them. If you made it all the way to this, you guys are awesome. If you made it this far in the video and you're still watching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and give me a like on this video just so I can know who you guys are. Cause you guys are real MVP. So, um, thanks guys. I hope you guys learned a lot and I'll catch you in the next one.